Chapman sitting here for Tom O'Brien on this Thursday, the 16th of November. Um, it's very interesting when you think about it. Look, the Dow's down 124, 34,866. After a move that went from 32,327 to 34,868, um, that's 2,400 points, um, all we've managed here is at, at a very, just on a purely technical overbought level, we've pulled back. But basically, it's only pulled back because Walmart is down uh, sharply, is down 8%, down 14 points at 155 uh, most of the other Dow stocks are not doing too badly. Uh, you've got a couple of, I'm just glancing here, uh, Travelers is up. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, it's up a little bit. You know, most of them are up a little bit or down a little bit. So let's go on because I'll first show you this. If For those of you who are not used to my work, I do the Tiger Technicians Hour every, uh, every market day, 10 o'clock till 11. Uh, that's Eastern Time. In the Chapman Wave methodology, and I have a newsletter called the Opening Call. And I look at this, you get a starting point for them for whatever price you're following. And if it makes a peak A, the first peak, and then pulls back and holds the left side low and then keeps going higher, very quickly it should go from a buy signal to a buy mode. The implication is that you should get at least four higher peaks going to the peak D, A, B, C, D. You can go E, F, and G. But D is your objective, and that's also where you can get your sharpest decline. Uh, look at this chart right here. I'm showing you. Here's travelers. There's a peak D above the 200 period moving average. Look at that sharp decline. Now it's peak A, peak B, peak C, another D. We're going to be watching this closely. So let's go back to the charts, and I'll explain the reason why I showed you that is that the Dow is in a buy mode. The stochastic is on the left side. This is the daily, this is the weekly, this is the monthly. The daily chart has got a very strong stochastic. Above 80% is good. Above 90% is fabulous. Above 95% is just perfect, especially if the stochastic remains flat. If it just bounces up over 80% and then fails, be careful. But this is at 96%. The on-balance volume, the blue line is good. The little gray line, the relative strength is good. The nine period is over the 14 period, and the price is way above. And we've got a left side, right side price time match to that midpoint right there in October, which went almost to the day to break above the high that was made back in September. And here you are with 34,868 as the high yesterday, pulling back a little bit. And as I said, Walmart is, is a fairly big part of that, although it's being ameliorated by ooh, Microsoft, which is up. Microsoft is up six, yeah, up six points at an all-time high trading at 375.78. See, this is what's happening in this market. Whenever something's big, something else takes its place. When everything's something strong, you get a little bit of a pullback from something that's weak. But look at this cup formation. It's broken out very nicely. So Microsoft is leading, and you've got other stocks in the Dow that are, are playing catch-up, but you've got a couple of leaders that are really counted. Uh, S&P, which also has Microsoft, is up. Uh, it makes an all-time high from... 4103 October the uh, 27th, and we're going to have Tim uh, Ord on at, uh, in the, uh, at the half hour, um, who made a fabulous call right on that Friday. And look at this. The S&P's gone from 4103 to a high yesterday of 4521. I would say that a 518-point uh, rally is not bad at all. And look at this. It's almost like, do I have to pull back? Okay, I'll pull back a little bit. But then, very quickly, we should go to a leg C. A leg C will be one penny above the high of yesterday. The QQQ, it's the same story. QQQ. Now, uh, Microsoft's in the Dow, Microsoft's in the S&P, Microsoft's in the QQQ, and the, and the XLK. So look at this. We're pulling back a little bit today. 387.75 is the high of yesterday. It went above the high, just barely above the high of 387. I think it was... Uh, did they make it 387.98? Oh, it hasn't broken above it yet. The high of uh, the week of uh, the 21st of July. Um, so it's acting extremely well. IWM, IWM is a Russell small caps. It's the Russell 2000. So we've got the daily chart right here on the left, the weekly chart in the middle, and the monthly chart on the right. You can see them going from the right. That arch formation says, wow, there's a lot of work to be able to use that as a bounce-off point. 
the arch formation here in the weekly chart says, well, there is a very nice bounce, but the 200 period moving average once again became a very important level and got repelled in the daily, but in the weekly, the daily is the same thing. Peak B pulling back a bit today, down two and a half at 176.33. But the technicals are starting to improve a lot. And that just says that IWM should try its best to, over the next week and a half to get to the 185, uh, 184 to 185 level. Now we need to go to the gold. Gold was plus 22. Is it still plus 22? Now it's plus 22.1. At 1980, has it closed down or something? It's been at this level for almost all day. But you see this this pattern here, I call it the falling axe formation. It looks like a, the axe handle right here. Let me just show you the chart. This is one of the techniques we use in the Chapman Wave methodology. Look at that. It goes straight up, suddenly stalls, makes the lower highs and much lower lows, and all of a sudden finds some support and tackles that declining, expanding cone resistance. If it can break above it and hold, that's going to be very positive because then you start looking at the left side peaks to challenge. Well, if we use that same analogy right here, you're looking at if the, if gold's able to close, I prefer not just bounce, but this time I'd like it to actually close above, I'll make it 1998, preferably getting to the 208 area. If it can do that, then it's going to form a V-shape or a cup-shaped formation trying to get to the next high, which would be in the continuous contract of 2011. Key support, a lot of support here at the 1969 to 1960 area. But silver was a screamer. Look at that. It bounced way above the 200 pre moving average. In a way, it's, it's leading. Now, the question, I don't want to get into this now. I'll do it tomorrow in my show at 10 o'clock. It's tied to technician's hour with uh, Friday's the Chapman Wave. Uh, an, um, analysis, we do things in a little bit more detail. Is this E or A? Well, that's the big question. But in the meantime, it's acting very well. The MACD is good. Stochastic's lagging a lot. And the weekly shows you it's got a lot of resistance in the weekly chart of about 20, just right on 24. So far, it's acting well. I'll be back because we want to talk about bonds. And the bonds are up today, up a point. Uh, we'll be back. Basil Chapman sitting for Tom O'Brien. Dow is down 138, S&P is down 2. See you in a few moments. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in 